Hi everyone, I'm Marie and welcome to my atomic talk called Contract Testing 101. In this talk, I would like to introduce you to what contract testing is, how is it different from API integration or unit testing, and what are its benefits. Now, to start, let's imagine that we have a simple REST service here. We have a web client who is a data consumer and makes a call to a REST API for some data. The API here is our data provider and grabs the data from the database and gives it back to the consumer. From a testing perspective, we can write some API integration tests, run it against a test environment, and then check that we are getting the correct data from the provider. If we, however, look at microservices where large software projects are broken down into smaller modules or components, and they are developed independently by different teams, this can bring in a different challenge to testing. The challenge is that if we try to test all the different microservices together in a dedicated testing environment, traditional API tests will not scale out well. Different teams can always deploy their changes to uh, different services um, at the same time, so the data can constantly change. Some services, some services might be down due to environment issues, and so relying on API testing will be cumbersome. So if we deploy small independent services, it has some benefits, but on the other hand, integration testing becomes complex since the integration points have increased. Now imagine if you have about hundreds or thousands of different services communicating to each other like what Amazon or Netflix have. How are you going to make sure that every change you make doesn't cause issues to other services? If we have uh, tests that are isolated, they are very valuable. They give us a very fast feedback loop to um, check if different inputs will yield um, the expected outputs. Here's a really nice animation from Packflow. So we have a consumer who's making a get request to slash users slash one to three. And there is also a mock provider that is predefined by the team. The mock provider is set to respond a status code of 200 and an object with name as its key and Mary as its value. At the same time, the provider also has isolated tests by simulating what the consumer is expecting. The problem with this is it doesn't give us confidence to release. The mock provider might not be the true representation of the real provider, and that can be the similar case with the consumer as well. And finally, it doesn't prevent broken changes to be deployed on a dedicated environment. The provider or the consumer can deploy broken changes to production, especially if they are on a different pipeline and doesn't trigger each other tests on a regular basis. With API integration tests, we test the actual endpoints and assert that the provider returns the data that the consumer is expecting. Here we have another nice animation from Backflow. So our consumer makes a get request, but rather than communicating to a mock provider, we are talking to the real provider instead. The problem with that with this is even though they are very valuable, having too much of these tests becomes very complex in microservices. They are also very slow and brittle since they are subjected to a lot of data change. It also requires dedicated environments where multiple services are integrated with one another. And so that will require lots of test maintenance. And finally, it, it also doesn't prevent us to deploy broken changes to be deployed. So what else can we do to test our services more efficiently? If we look at how we can test a fire alarm, we don't set our house on fire. That would be a very disastrous thing to do. Instead, we test the contract it holds with our ears by using the, far, the, uh, by using the fire alarm testing button. And this is where contract testing comes in. So contract testing is simply a form of testing where you test the contract between the services that are communicating to each other. We have a concept of a consumer. So this is a client or another service that consumes data from a provider. We have a provider who's the service that provides data to a consumer. We also have the concept of a pack or a contract. So this is a document which serves as the contract between consumer and the provider. This is normally in a JSON format and captures what request the consumer needs from the provider. 
Um, we also have a pack broker. So a pack broker is a hosted service which stores all the contract. So pack broker serves as your communication channel between consumers and the providers. Now we have a tool that can uh, that uh, that we can use for contract testing. One of them is PAC. So PAC is predominantly consumer driven, meaning that the consumer defines the contract. With consumer driven contract testing, the provider is free to change their behavior without affecting the consumer test if the consumer doesn't use it. Um, this also means that we can have you know more confidence in making changes on both the provider and on the consumer side. So how does contract testing works? So contract, text, um, contract testing works you know, on two parts. First, let's see how it works on the consumer side. So we have a consumer, they write their test from what they expect the provider to respond, but instead of communicating to an actual data provider, PAC simulates a mock provider. The expectations are then recorded on a contract, which the consumer then uploads to a PAC broker. Now, let's see how it works on the provider side. So um, after the contract has been uploaded to the PAC broker, the provider will then grab the contract and then it will replay the request that the consumer specified on the contract and PAC will then verify if the expectations are similar to what the real provider provides. By utilizing contract testing, you can get the following benefits. So first, you can have a fast feedback since the tests are very quick to run. You can run the test independently on both the consumer and the provider pipeline. Less maintenance is required unless there's been a change in the contract. PAC allows you to match data types so you can ignore data changes. But if there are changes on the actual data type, this can be flagged. It also gives us confidence to release. So PAC has a CLI tool, which lets you check if you can safely deploy changes to, an, to a specific environment via their can I deploy command. It also doesn't need integrated environment since the contract will be uploaded to the PAC broker. Um, the contract also acts as your source of truth and provides extra documentation to your team. You can also have that increased confidence that you can evolve your code bases continuously, knowing that PAC will ensure that the contract is satisfied. It stops over-reliance to slow API tests or UI tests, which can be challenging in microservices. And finally, it makes sure that only parts of the API that will actually be used by consumers will be developed. Now, on the other hand, there are scenarios where using PAC or contract testing might not be ideal. So if you don't have buy-ins from different teams, then it's difficult to get the value that you want. Public APIs as well, where you don't know who your consumers are. Third-party APIs, where it's difficult to convince them to have provider tests in their pipeline. And to finish this off, um, remember that contract testing is not a replacement for functional or for performance testing. It's an extra layer of test that you can utilize to have better confidence that changes in your APIs doesn't have any adverse effects. Now, that is pretty much it for my Atomic Talk. If you have any follow-up questions, ask me on Twitter at mcruzdrake. Thank you to Test Drive for inviting me to speak, and I hope you all found this talk useful. Bye!